Hey guys, this is Killer Rob speaking and this is an Ethereum blockchain gaming experiment. What, what, what? Well, <laughs> you probably heard that right, but uh, may not know what that even means. And neither did I. But the action RPG called Book of Demons is releasing a major milestone in Steam Early Access and the developers of the game thought, nah, major milestones are kind of boring. Let's spice it up and, as a side, pioneer what potentially could become the future of digital games distribution. Fair enough, I said when they contacted me asking if I wanted to be part of this experiment. And as a PhD in experimental nuclear physics, I never say no to a good experiment or crazy idea, as long as you can repair it with duct tape and cable ties. And. As a game developer myself, exploring the possibility of an improved game distribution model is intriguing, to say the least. In this video I'll first briefly talk about the game, its pros and cons, and after that about the experiment itself. In a follow-up video I'll go deeper into the concept of the experiment, explore its strengths, its flaws and discuss potential solutions. On screen right now you see a game I have covered and enjoyed playing on my channel before. It is an homage to classic Diablo 1 which single-handedly brought ARPGs into the gaming mainstream back in the day. Book of Demons takes the theme and premise of Diablo 1 without copying its game mechanics. Rather it is a somewhat light-hearted, more casual approach if you have played Diablo 1, you will quickly feel at home and get lots and lots of references from that game. It is a classic that holds up pretty well even today. In Book of Demons, skills and items have been replaced by upgradable collectible cards. Skills take mana to activate, while other equipment like armor, belts and amulets lock part of your mana pool, making less available for using skills. Just like in Diablo 1, the dungeons are completely randomized apart from the boss levels which rely more on scripting. To me the biggest difference in gameplay between Diablo and the Book of Demons is not the skill and item system though, but rather that your character travels through the dungeon on predefined paths. That definitely will be off-putting to some or even many of you and makes the gameplay feel distinctly different to the free roaming in other ARPGs. This design decision comes with a rat's tail of consequences like the fact that all characters play as ranged characters and are differentiated mostly by their class specific skills and what random item cards they find during their travels. With the launch version of the game you get to choose between three classes just like in classic Diablo 1, the warrior, the rogue and the mage. As someone who has played ARPGs for thousands of hours, this on rail limitation took me a while to get used to but I warmed to it in the end because all game mechanics were purpose built around that very limitation. To me, the biggest selling point of the game is its pristine audio-visual design. The paper cutout cardboard look and animations fit really well with the somewhat simpler game mechanics and it is damn pretty in a unique way. The sound and ambience of the game together with its looks are quite stunning, I truly love that. The devs are fortunate that Poland is so damn far away from New Zealand because otherwise I'd probably come by, kidnap them and lock them in my developer dungeon to make awesome 2.5D games with me. Also I need to mention that the game is highly polished, uh, uh, polished as well I guess, and even being in early access feels mostly bug free. Be aware though that if you are someone who dislikes anything in this genre that is more casual than Path of Exile, you probably are not going to have much fun with this one. For me personally, Book of Demons is on the lower end of the spectrum of acceptable complexity. 
and I'd recommend you try it out if you are unsure if this is something for you or not. There is a free demo too, so you got nothing to lose really. And this is where things depart from normality and venture deep into uncharted territory. While you can buy the game normally via Steam, the developers of Book of Demons have teamed up with Game Nation to set up an alternative new experimental distribution channel based on smart contracts, which is a feature within the Ethereum blockchain technology. For now, you just need to know that Ethereum, just like Bitcoin, is a digital currency and a giant decentralized database of network transaction history that practically is impossible to defraud because the whole network is watching at all times, correcting mistakes and reverting manipulation automatically, making the technology not only very fast but also very safe for all involved parties. For this small-scale experiment, the developer and Game Nation have set up such smart contracts involving four parties. The players, the developer, the influencer and Game Nation itself. In this test run, once the player has purchased the game with Ethereum via Game Nation and has received his normal Steam key, the developer instantly receives 80% the influencer 15% and Game Nation gets 5% of the amount paid. In my opinion, understanding what problems this experiment wants to address helps understand how and why the smart contracts are set up in this way. Let us look at it from the perspective of each party involved. Steam is a fantastic platform for gamers and developers, but sure, it has its flaws and adapts to the changing landscape of games rather slowly. The cut Steam receives from normal sales in most cases is 30% of the game's sales price. Add to that the various taxes, conversion costs and general friction in the whole banking system and whatnot, and while, well, while this is much better than the shares a developer would see when working with a big publisher, there's still room for improvement and optimization, I would argue. One issue developers have, for instance, is that the funds from sales actually take up to two months to reach them. If you just finished making your game, and naturally are out of money at that point, with running costs on the order of $50,000 a month, even for a small studio, such a delay of like two months can seriously bite you in the butt. All those costs, risks and delays obviously have a price, which ultimately the end consumer has to pay. At this point we note the new distribution model's advantages for the developer and the player. Almost instantaneous payment for the developer and lower prices for the player as a result. Another issue in today's games market for developers and gamers is visibility and discoverability. There's a massive amount of games flooding the market every day and the question is how to get the right game to the person who enjoys it. This is where the so-called influencers like YouTubers come into the picture. With classic games media dying a well-deserved death after declaring us all for dead, very few actually care about what they have to say and find problematic anymore. Nowadays it is mostly let's plays and video reviews that gamers watch to decide whether or not to spend their money on a game. This content can be a lot more specialized too. For instance, I'm pretty sure that most of my audience would trust my nuanced opinion on an ARPG or a Tycoon Games mechanics more than an IGN or Polygon review. Influencers have become so important that when a big one covers a game, for the developer that can make the difference between just scraping by and a massive success. Considering how important influencers are, they sure tend to see very little in return and recent developments in regards to YouTube as a platform 
don't look that rosy either. The yellow dollar signs of doom are invading, actually. Kid Rob, don't you see a massive potential conflict of interest here? And to that I respond, damn right I do. That is a massive potential uh, conflict of interest. And that is something I'll definitely discuss more in depth in the discussion video along with how I'd attempt to safeguard against that issue. But for now, let me mention the following. The most important long-term asset of any influencer is integrity and audience trust. Also, both the developer and the distribution platform hate refunds. So it is also in their best interest to not have the wrong influencers on board. That in itself is not enough of a safeguard against unethical behavior, I think. But with smart contracts, that could potentially be changed. Another aspect I have not covered here is the behemoth in the room, and that would be Steam. Does Steam allow or even tolerate this? And the short answer is yes. But the long answer will have to be the result of a discussion in the follow-up video. Go to hell! So in summary, the player will see lower prices, the developer gets quicker access and more direct payment, as well as a better connection to suitable influencers, and the influencers get a slice of the pie for providing visibility and covering the game. In this first trial experiment, things are kept really simple and neither the developers nor Game Nation expect many sales via this at all, and neither do I. But if you would like to be part of this pioneering activity, you can buy a Steam key for Book of Demons via Game Nation using Ethereum. It only takes a few minutes to set up and the process is actually pretty easy despite some complicated sounding technical terms in there. In the description below this video you find my referral link that brings you to the Game Nation smart contract including me as an influencer. Even though I have a pitiful number of subscribers in comparison to some others. Um, Game Nation has put up an easy quick to follow tutorial on how to get started with Ethereum. So, even if you're not interested in buying the game itself, but want to look into digital currencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, it definitely makes sense to get started with them sooner rather than later. The technology definitely is here to stay with all the benefits it offers, even when, in my opinion, the uh, currency side of blockchain tech looks like a big fat bubble right now. But that may be just me. Thank you for considering taking part in this gaming science experiment. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, hope you found this intriguing and see you guys next time.